Let me pass on a couple of other playlist editing tips I want to give you. One is, if you want to change the angle of a playlist clip, just select the clip that you want, cue it up, and then this particular one is the A angle, but if I want to change it to the B angle, I can just press the function button, then B, and that'll change that angle to B, so it's just that fast. If you want to change the speed of a clip that's in a highlight uh, playlist, just select the clip that you want, then press the properties button for that, and you'll see there's a button that says speed, and you can change that speed of that clip, or any clip that's in the playlist, to a particular speed. I just changed that one to 50%. If you want to individually change the in and out points of a playlist clip, just select the clip that you want, cue it up, and press shift trim. What this will do is add the guard bands to the clip, and now you can go outside the normal clip area that there was for the in and out point. So now I'm selecting a new in, and I can go through, find my out point that I want, select the out, and then press the take button, and it'll change the in and out points of that particular clip. Really handy things for doing live production playlists. Another area that has been greatly expanded in the Dyno 2.0 software is that of the VGA output screen from the Dyno controller itself, which I like to call the power screen, because there's some really powerful things you can do with it now. For instance, this screen has all of the information that is on the home screen built into it, including audio meters. But the added benefit is how much easier it is to look at multiple things at the same time. Let me point out a couple of things. Right now, we're looking at the highlight bin one, and I've got a tab called highlights here. You can expand the screen itself by going and looking at the library, for instance, which can be the bins that are all over on the summit area. That's really what the library is. But one of the things you can do is if I go back to the highlight screen, I can even expand this out further. So now that you'll be able to see that I've got a library section here as well as a highlight section, this is really great for importing and exporting clips because what you can do is you can go into your library, which would be on the summit itself. This is summit red. I go into the default screen, for instance, and when I open that up, you'll see that I have different clips that are, are in here. I can drag and drop those over into the, the highlight screen that's open, which is bin one, and you'll see that that just comes right in there. So it doesn't really stop there, though. I'm going to uh, close this part down under the power screen, and then you'll see that in the playlist area of the power screen, I can also expand this out so that now I can actually look at two playlists at the same time. One is on player channel one, this is the auxiliary audio uh, playlist that we had done previously. And then this next one is a different playlist that we can be working on. So what's cool about this is I can even go in and I can add clips from my highlight screen directly into a playlist. I can move those around with a keyboard and mouse very quick. You can do those things on the touch screen as well, but you'll find that some people are much more comfortable doing this sort of playlist work and editing on this screen itself. Now we've been working with the Dyno on a standalone system. You should be aware that the Dyno is fully compatible with any Summit SAN system that could be put together. And there's an interesting feature that's in here that it will allow the Dyno controller, if you had multiple controllers, multiple operators, to look at other Summit systems record trains. So there's a feature in here called Shift Browse. And when that comes up, you'll see a screen that allows you to, in this case, go back and look at the record trains of other sessions. All you do is pick the session that you want. This might have been a session I'd done earlier this morning, and then I can queue up the clips that are within there by doing Q Remote, and then those clips that are within there, this happens to be ba uh, baseball, I can go in and look at the different angles of that record train. You'd do the same thing if you wanted to go and inspect other Summit systems that are on a SAN system. In addition, XDCAM native support for playlists with transitions has been added. So now you can see all the improvements that have been made in the Dyno 2.0 software.